Back at the end of 2020 when Assault Meliodas released, he looked like an absurdly broken character. But perception of him shifted rather quickly. I don't recall how long it took, but eventually, and I say eventually in a way where it sounds like it's a lot, but it was pretty, pretty quick. People caught on that he was very easy to counter and he didn't look all that good anymore. Kind of put him down and he became kind of a joke for a long time. He got a Holy Relic and became pretty good again, but obviously it wasn't like he got an LR or anything, it was just a Holy Relic. But right now, as we speak, he is a contender for best team in the game. 2024, greatest comeback in history. I, I cannot think of a single character that has had a greater comeback than Assault Meliodas, being a joke unit. People made fun of this guy for years. And now he is unironically a meta character, which is crazy thinking about, you know, characters that have released after him, like Purgatory Meliodas and Traitor Meliodas. They are, you know, right now at the position that Assault Mali was not so long ago, they just need a holy relic. These Meliodas festivals, they they are relevant for long. Lost Vein, yeah, he fizzled out, but then he got a, a LR, and guess what? The LR was hyper meta for quite some time. And then now Assault Melee makes a resurgence again. I cannot wait for that traitor Meliodas holy relic. Oh Assault Melee. Okay. They usually That's odd. Okay. Usually the AoE cards are on the right. If they have if a character has a single target in the AoE, I don't I don't have hard data for this. But I would say that usually the AoE card is on the right. So I didn't I, I put Melly on the left slot thinking that he would if he got an extra card he would combine the single target, not the AoE. Because I don't want to actually combine AoEs. I want to have as many as possible for Esterosa, but that's fine. Maybe I am tripping. Maybe the the ratio is normal of characters that have AoEs as the left card, but I'm pretty sure most characters have AoEs as their right card. I know because, you know, it is a big time mechanic, very important mechanic in the game. The the seventh card is a card that you specifically choose to either combine or not combine. When you're building your team, you gotta think about it. And ex I, I exactly, you know, didn't want to put uh, Assault Melee in a position where that would happen. But that's fine. What changed? You know, Gelda, Gelda changed. Melee's passive is extremely good right now. And what's really great about him is that opposed to his counterpart, which would be Demon King Melee, he can actually go second. Don't get me wrong, Demon King Mali can also go second. Look. Guys, okay, it's Assault Mali. Come on. Demon King Mali can also go second. I forgot to move and he got another AoE again! It's fine, we got triple AoE again. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> Demon King Mali can go second. It's not the end of the world. Because you're gonna get those cleanses. But the thing is, it, it, it is much better for him to go first because then you can set up the balls on the enemies so that he can at least remove balls from one enemy thus giving him the uh the rank up more easily for that following turn let's do let's just triple away who cares who cares getting the Astorosa passive here's where Mali's passive comes in look at all those crits very nice we killed his melee. Even though he went first, right? Even though he went first, I win this battle because I procced my melee passive and he didn't really. He didn't get you get any use out of his melee passive, which is those defense uh, really the stat lowers. This is where assault melee comes really big here. Those defense really stat lowers are huge. We're gonna make the most use out of it for Gelbin. Now we're not gonna just use a Tarosa, because I actually I I like using a Tarosa because you get the really high basic stats, but I feel very unprotected using a Tarosa in Assault Melee. 
I don't know. I don't know. Let's just uh, let's do this. So many defense cracks. So many defense. So Astros is dead. Like the, the AOEs are gonna kill. Like we're not attacking for assault melee, but don't get me wrong. Like this damage is higher than it should be because of assault melee. Could have been higher if Nanasha gave me the passive, but whatever. Those defense cracks are no joke, right? And because assault melee's relic gives him a ton of stats. He becomes a not so not, not such a liability on the field. Like Estorosa is great, but I feel like he can just die at any moment. He, he really can, but Assault Melee is much more sturdy. Now we swapped here into Zeldris. Because with Zeldris we can do this. And that's a ton of healing first turn. The problem I have with him, and I probably will always swap from him, is remember the uh, Estorosa team we talked about? It's probably the most, or we just use, right? It's probably the most used team in the game right now. At the very least, from me playing, that's the team I see by far the most. And Estorosa kind of crumbles on the side of, uh, <laughs> of Est sorry, Zeldris crumbles on the side of Estorosa immediately. As soon as you attack, you lose your crit chance buff. And after that, Zeldris becomes extremely inconsistent as soon as that buff is removed, so... Eh, I'm a big fan of his work, but unfortunately... I just want to include him in the video, but he's he's gonna be shipped away rather quickly. Oh, we didn't kill the melee. That's fine. He's still pretty good, though. He's still an option. It's just the opposition at the moment really messes him up. If he didn't need that crit chance buff, I think he would be quite a bit better. The thing is that the, the AoE is really good for Gelda because you get a ton of healing. But if you don't have the crit chance buff, then you don't get the healing because you're going to miss a lot of the crits. You'd think, right, like Zeldris, we don't have the crit chance buff anymore, right? So he has 170 crit chance right now. And he... How, how much is uh, the lore? He lowers core resistance by 20%. Like, you'd think, oh, that's easy crits, right? It's not. <laughs> it's not. Effectively, 190% crit chance. And if I would have to, you know, speculate, he would miss 90% of crits. Just from playtime with him, using the AoE first turn against, like, Demon King Melis and Geldas, yeah, he... He misses them a lot more than I would love to see. Oh, we can get an uh, Assault Melee windscreen here. Let's do that. Why not? I, I love the Assault Melee windscreen. I hate the Purgatory Melee windscreen. If I'm thinking about Melee windscreen, that one's garbage. You can't even see his face on it. He's just looking from behind. I forgot to remove Zeldris before clicking to go again. Oh, well. Bonus Zeldris match, I guess. The next one was going to be Demon King, but I guess I'll just stay for just a tiny bit more. We went first twice, which is not ideal. I, I I don't get much out of Melly's passive if I go first, so hopefully that doesn't happen again. Sorry, I meant if I do go first. I don't know why. I'm just really messing my words right now. Facing a unknown. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to do a DK single target and then not attack, because I actually don't want to attack. I don't really care about uh, getting debuffed by hell at the moment, so... I'm just gonna make sure that he doesn't get the damage increase, and that's about it. You can do whatever else you feel like it. Oh, I don't like that, actually. <laughs> Maybe not whatever he wants. Ah, he's, I'm only gonna get one debuff on him. Mm. So, I like DK here. Because he helps even more with the crits. Ah, but... We don't get that many, so... Maybe this isn't very good, actually. I hate facing unknown. Like, why do people still run this? It just should be annoying, I think. You're not winning that many matches anyways. You're just running this should be annoying. Because, like, unknown is not... In its heyday anymore. It's getting clapped by every meta team. 
is just an sort of annoying team to face. Because Hal, Hal is an annoying character. I guess, I mean, you can still win if I'm known for sure. But Zahard? Like, come on. <laughs> that was Zahard with the crown buff doing an AoE. You're gonna tell me Zahard is popping off? I don't think so. Let's, uh. Is there some melee AoEs? Let's see. Okay. That's a Kami Chigiri that actually did something. A bunch of crits that didn't do much damage compared to like non crits, but you know, it is what it is. The, the thought is what counts. We got another Astorosa here. Like I said, this is, I would say, the most common team. It's between this and potentially the Assault Melees, but I would say it's like. 40-ish percent of the time I face this team, and then the other 60 is like a varied sort of teams. There's there's quite a bunch of uh, highly usable teams at the moment. All right, triple AOE this, DK first, melee, and then it's gonna be a ton of crit resistance and crit defense lowering, plus a good amount of HP as well. Oh, you know, I forgot. I, I forgot to uh, give Melly the Zeldra's link for life steal. Oh, whatever. Whatever. Asterosa and Melly can't heal yet. I mean, Melly will be able to as soon as he uh, gets his rank up. Fortunately, you cannot debuff Gelda with DK, which would be a reason for me to say like DK might not be the best of options, because, like, legit, his debuff doesn't even work on the best character in the game. But still good. Okay. We... Ooh, we do this. That kills... That kills Asterosa, right? Hmm... I think it does, but like, let's not risk it, I guess. Let's, uh, this will kill, and then we, we do this. Make sure Melly's dead so he doesn't have a chance. This will remove my encroachment. Maybe I should have level 3 on Gelda. Mm. Potentially. I don't think he would have killed, though. That's the thing, it's like, yeah, I could have leveled 3 on Gelda, but like, I don't think that would have made much of a difference. Albedo in the back. Oh. That's an odd choice. That's an odd choice that could be very bad for me. Okay. He didn't get a taunt, at least. Nice. He got the ult. Oh, he already has taunt, I forgot. <laughs> uh, I suppose I, I'll i just... Uh... Tarbiel Link was Nestor, sorry. Okay. I'll get my own ult and potentially kill Albedo here. Probably kill Albedo. That would be nice, because uh, if I can remove one turn from Galda, that would be probably what's best. Nope. Let's just hope he's not 6-6. Six, six. I mean, that's what Gelda matches are. Whoever has the 6-6, six, six, Gelda usually wins. It, it, it's a lot of the matches end up to this. Whoever gets the 6-6 six, six, Gelda ultimate first wins. Oh, he didn't even ult Gelda. Thing is, my 6-6 six, six Gelda does not one-shot his Gelda anymore. Because he has uh, HP buff. <sighs> <laughs> What was his alt level? 1-6. Great. Dude, Gyaldo is a regular banner character. Once she starts being put on more banners... Nah, she's not gonna be put on star tickets for a while, because... Oh. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have one shot if she had a higher level alt le uh, Gyaldo. It is, uh, it is annoying, but it's true. Alright. 
I think I'll end with this one. Ooh, we go second. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Excited about going second. That's my, uh, that's my, that's my problem making videos with teams that want to go second. It's like I have a really hard time getting footage. Because, unfortunately, the truth is, majority of the people, quote-unquote, I face aren't people. They are bots. So, let's break the shield first, because DK cannot break the shield. Can Gelda break the shield? With no HP buff? Well, I guess we'll find out. She cannot. Okay. Oh, she broke King. But the damage reduction plus... Bond is such an annoyance for her, because, like, not only, not only the bastard, you know, gives damage reduction from his passive, but he also ha is, like, light attribute, so he further gives damage reduction. Yeah, out of the teams we played today, I think Estorosa probably is my, uh, my favorite, even though I was talking smack about his uh, survivability. It's just that, that ba the basic stats are just phenomenal. Although, like being able to run a dark character with her is also pretty nice for the damage increase. Uh, let's do this. I think I, I actually don't think I, I kill Melly, but there's a lot of defense lower, so maybe. Okay, I AOE the assault Melly just in case DK didn't like kill King, but I don't know why I. I don't know why I doubt it, to be honest. I guess I shouldn't have doubted DK. When he gets that rank up, he got all the attack buffs. Boy goes crazy. I got the ult, so I just... Like, at this point of the match, it becomes really hard for Gelbit to die. But yeah, facing Sins with her... Oh, level 3. Facing Sins with her... The damage reductions are troublesome. Uh, can we kill Mallory with this? We might not be able to, actually. Let's just kill Merlin. I know it sounds like I should be going for Mallory right now, but like Merlin is our biggest enemy here, because uh, that 30% thir damage reduction is very troublesome for Gelda. With no damage increase from uh, the card, just raw damage, 30% damage reduction is 30% damage reduction. It's like real damage reduction. So, yeah, k killing Merlin and Bon is actually way more impactful than killing Mali, because at this point, like, Mali can't kill her either, so. Level three. This should kill. Maybe not, because Mali has a, <laughs> he has the single target damage reduction. But he probably will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen. When we're talking about Demon King Melly, he becomes very annoying for her. Because not only not only he has type advantage against her, which is damage reduction, he has the single target damage reduction. So if I face him 6-6, six, six, a 6-6 six, six Melly has like, what, 15? Is it the number? And then there's the Merlin damage reduction, there's the Bond, there's lots of stuff. Well, 